I have a confession to make. I've been suffering from performance issues for the last seven years. Not really knowing it. You could be suffering from those very same performance issues. Would you like to know? No, you sick little monkeys. Not those kind of performance issues. I'm talking about NAS performance issues. I'm going to try to explain that uh, here in just a minute. Okay, so what do I mean by LAN, the NAS performance issues? Well, it's tied into the LAN, which is run at one gigabits per second. So let's do a little math, shall we? First of all, let me pull up this little handy converter here that's online. And notice that it says that a one gigabit per second speed transfers or converts to 125 megabytes per second. So you take the one gigabits, you need eight bits for a byte. You divide by one, this is what you get, 125. So, okay, 125. Well, as I've got the, here in the corner, you'll notice I have a caddy over here with two drives in it. One's a one terabyte drive from roughly 2014. And the other is a two gig, two terabyte drive from 2019. So with Crystal Disk Mark, we're going to go to the very first drive here. And we're just gonna do some read write speed on that drive. Now remember, this is a drive with a manufacture date of roughly about 2014. So the results that we get here are nine years old, but we'll take a look at it and see what we get. So here's our read speed. And here is our write speed. Not bad for a nine year old drive. Seems to do fine. Let's take a look and see what the 2019 drive does once this is finished and that's finished. So we will now go to the next drive in line, which is this one here. That's the two terabyte from 2019. Let's run a speed test on that. Not bad for a four year old drive. And there we have our write speed. Pretty good, pretty good. So now let's run a Crystal Disk Mark test against the NAS drives. Now the NAS drives, there's a pair in there from 2016 and a pair in there from, I believe 2020 or 2019 as well, but Let's take a look. By the way, you do know that you can run a speed test on a map to network drive, right? There's our pair of four terabyte drives on the NAS. And let's see what we get. Keeping in mind what you see on the left side, a one gigabit LAN can transfer at ideally 125. So here are our numbers, 118 out of 125. That's roughly about 94% of the theoretical speed. I consider that to be pretty good. But the drives in the NAS are, a east, are easily newer than the 2014 drive, and they're, at least one pair is about the same age as the two terabyte drive here, which is a desktop drive. And they transfer at a much faster rate. Apparently, obviously, the bottleneck is the LAN. So what happens if we see about, well, what if we had a 2.5 gigabit LAN speed? Well, 312.5. Okay. So apparently, assuming that I can get anywhere between 175 to 200 megabytes per second out of the drives of the NAS if I go to a two and a half gigabyte LAN speed, I'm going to see roughly a 50% increase in performance 
from the home built NAS. So interesting. So we're going to do a little experiment uh, and I'm going to be sort of upgrade. I'll be upgrading both the network and the NAS to two and a half gigabits per second. I have several machines on the network that already have 2.5 gigabit LAN network cards in them. So can I get the 175 ish to 200 megabits per second if I upgrade the speed of my LAN? Well, let's find out. And I'm going to show you what I've got that, that we're going to try to accomplish, accomplish that with. Okay, so here are the new parts, if you will, that we're going to do the 2.5 gigabit LAN upgrade with. Number one, uh, I have to disable the onboard card in the, uh, the home-built NAS box and replace it with this uh, Intel uh, i225-V which as you can probably see here, I'll bring that up a little bit. It's 2.5. And then we have a MokerLink Ethernet switch. This one is an eight port variety, which I will show you here briefly. And there you go, eight ports. I will eventually can uh, get rid of or uh, mothball the 16 port, one gigabit switch. This is what we'll be replacing it, at least for those workstations that have 2.5 gigabit network cards already in them. So this is what we got. Let me get this guy out of here. Oh. So that's what we got. We've got two pieces. Um, and hopefully when I'm finished with this, I should see a market increase in... Um, overall NAS performance. I should be able to get close to what the drives themselves um, are supposed to deliver. And at least that's my hope. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so this is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, but the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to install the two and a half gigabit Ethernet card into one of the one by slots here. So we'll take this, I think it's this one here. And get the card in. Pretty simple. Nothing special. Now, the next thing I have to do is get into the BIOS on the machine and disable the onboard LAN, which is one gigabit. And hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, this card will automatically be picked up. We'll see if that is the case. So uh, let's get started with that part of it. So oh, we're in the BIOS. So let's go over here. And let's disable the onboard LAN controller, which is right here. All right, so that's done. We'll save that to BIOS. I will plug in the cable into the two and a half gigabit ethernet. And once this machine restarts itself, hopefully it should see the card and reassign the IP address that the static IP address that I have already set for this. But we will find out here in a moment. Okay. The fact that it reassigned the IP address looks good. Everything seems to be correct. So it looks like the card was recognized. I have an actual interface uh, and the IP address was reassigned. So everything looks good. So the next step is I'm going to temporarily set up the uh, eight port 2.5 gigabit switch, uh, hook the NAS up to it, hook up the streaming computer to that as well and just run some tests, which uh, we'll see what we get uh, from here. Okay, so after having done all of that work, what are we going to get out of this thing? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to our four terabyte pair, and let's run a speed test on it and see what we get. Well, that's an impressive read speed. I believe we've doubled the read speed.
Now that's a little disappointing for the right speed. It's better, but it's not significantly better. So let's try the eight terabyte set. See if it's any different. Again, our write speed, I'm seeing our read speed is rather impressive. And again, our write speed is just not, not much of an increase, unfortunately. So that's a little disappointing. That's definitely disappointing. I have to believe that it might have something to do with either hardware that I'm running it on, because I am running it on essentially a potato. It's a AMD A6 5400 from at least eight, ten years ago. And it's running off of a single stick of um, DDR3, 8 gigabyte. So that may or may not have something to do with it. I will probably have to investigate that a little bit later on to find out what's going on. Or I simply could be overloading uh, the built-in cache on the drive. So that, that's, that's going to be an interesting thing to take a look at. So anyway, um, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm not thrilled that I'm not getting the right speed that I think I should be getting. But then maybe there's been an underlying problem with the NAS all this time, and I just didn't know it. So I would like to believe that right read speed should be relatively close together. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, no, that's it for the project for now. Uh, like I said, I'll probably be doing some investigation a little bit later on to see if I can figure out why the write speed is, has not improved a lot. It definitely has improved, but uh, not as much as I had hoped. Anyway, that's about it for now, kids. Uh, I guess we'll see you uh, somewhere down the road.